Virgil 3SS, hell yeah. Doing this with Royal Guard was something I considered the holy grail of Devil May Cry 3 in years past, but let's just say you put in the time, you get the results. A lot went into this fight and it all paid off, although with the moves he chose to use there's some cool things I learned but didn't get to show. With this, I think I can say I've conquered DMC3, and what a pleasure it is to be making this video and getting to show it off to the world. Let's get to the fight. Royal Guard being inherently defensive means you're going to be letting Virgil take the fight to you. Judgment cuts are the best attack he can use. If spaced properly you can get a full just release on him followed by a combo, which is the most damage possible. Letting him parry you like this messes with his AI somewhat. Normally when his health reaches certain points he'll leave and summon swords, but if he parries he'll occasionally choose something else. Here he goes for Helmbreakers twice in a row so I get to do a ludicrous amount of damage for free basically. Although performing a just release against these attacks is easy, because of where it places you you can't follow up with a combo afterwards and a combo plus a standard release is more damage. In phase 1, when he decides to activate Devil Trigger is random, and unfortunately he decided to use it just before summoning swords. Because of this I have to run away and wait for them to disperse and attack me while he gets to regenerate health the entire time. The longer he's alive the scarier it is, since basically everything he can do carries some level of threat, so I'm trying to output as much damage as possible, always. His second phase is where things get terrifying, his first onslaught in particular. He has a variety of attacks, many of which involve teleporting on top of you, and he does them while swords are circling him or when they're attacking you. I had to find some odd jump timings to avoid getting hit by these things, and when he uses the variant where he puts his swords above his head I'm fairly certain it's literally impossible to avoid while also accounting for all the other things he can do. Once you're through this it gets easier and it's all about not choking. For a short period he's effectively back to his phase 1 self and it's time to take advantage. I go crazy and blow every resource I have trying to do as much damage as possible here. He seals his fate when he decides to go for a dive after parrying me. A situation like this is the exact reason I chose the shotgun. Just a tiny bit more damage than Ebony and Ivory, but if I hadn't had it I think he would have lived. Needless to say I was really tense at this point and the thought of going through another full cycle of attacks was not a pleasant one, but I managed to not make any mistakes. And so ends my Devil May Cry 3 saga. I absolutely adore this game start to finish and hopefully that's come through in my gameplay and commentary. It's been a journey to say the least. If you're watching this you probably have some interest in taking games a little further than most people opt to, and my advice to you is to go for it. After all, don't you want to have big demon balls? You really get to see what you're made of and I think most people would be surprised about what they're capable of if they attempt this. One day I'd like to tackle this with Virgil but I need a break for now. Thanks for watching dudes, this has been Zodiac and I hope you enjoyed the playthrough as much as I did. Any questions at all about any part of the whole thing, feel free to ask in the comments. Thanks.